Welcome to the Jamestown First Baptist Church Worship Hour. Established in 1930, the First Baptist Church has been instrumental in spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ across the Cumberland Mountains. An aggressive local missions program has assisted in establishing sister churches in Fentress County, the Pickett State Park area, and Morgan County. With programs to minister to the individual and the family, we invite you to join with us in our live worship service. Good morning. I'd like to welcome you here to First Baptist Church. Glad that you are here. If you are listening by radio, watching by television, or uh, watching on Facebook or whatever, we welcome you to our church and uh, things that are going on. Baptist Reflectors, if you're interested in reading what's going on in the state of Tennessee and the Baptist Reflectors, they're in the front and the back. Again, uh, uh, we are taking... Our, we're, we don't pass the offering plate anymore, so the offering plates are in the front and the back if you want to do, give your tithe there, and you can still do it on online. And if you don't know how to do it online, you want to do online tithing, then you can call Tammy, and Tammy can help you get set up. So, uh, Brother Gary is going to have uh, September the 18th and 19th. That's uh, still a month away, 423 youth kickoff. And so you just stay and continue to watch uh, things for that. And uh, Go ahead. This, what's really exciting about this is our youth is handling most of this. All We're right. This Good deal. It's great. So anyway, we're, it's going to be held here uh, at the barn. At the barn. In Clark Range. In Clark Range. Okay. So that's good. So that'll be out at uh, Clark Range at at, uh, at Phillips and uh, Lucille Horst, so we're excited about that. They've got a great facility to do uh, any kind of uh, church program or youth program, and so uh, thank you for opening up. Uh, Miss Kimberly, if you would like to work in the nursery and be a part of that, you can fill one of these out. It's an insert in your, uh, in your uh, bulletin, and let me make sure. I think I thought it's, we're under 100 days now. Paul, is that correct, to uh, OCC uh, collection? And so people still need to continue if you want to work with that. Uh, they meet every tu Tuesday morning from 9 to 12, and you can come and be a part of that ministry. Now, I guess uh, one thing I've not been saying, you know, if you look around and you see people that don't, I know we, a lot of times used to, we would, Brother Gary would play and everybody would turn around and shake hands. But if you're a visitor, and, and I've not been saying that, we welcome you to our church. If you're not a regular attender, on the bulletin there's a little thing that you can pull off and fill out. And if you, you fill that out, somebody will be glad. If you want somebody to contact you or come and give you more information about our church, we would. If, if nobody, we want to make sure everybody gets spoken to. So, and Brother Gary, one of his songs, maybe nothing will turn around and you can nod. But I want everybody to know that if you're a visitor, we're glad that you're here. And, uh, and we're, uh, we're not shaking hands to do the social uh, the COVID stuff, but we want to make sure that everybody is welcome. Uh, uh, this week we're sending uh, cards to Rubel and Corrine Knatzer. Their address is in the bulletin. You can be a part of that. I see there Operation Christmas Child, 98 days. I thought it was under 100. Uh, we continue, I'd ask you to continue to pray for the Pastor Search Committee. We are uh, still searching and working and, uh, and seeking God's will. There's a list of prayer requests. We've got, uh, there's people that are still fighting cancer. There's people that's had cancer that, uh, that got good reports this week. And there's others that have passed away. And so, I mean, uh, God's at work. He knows what we need. And sometimes uh, it's not, may not be what we think we need, but it's what God's will is. And so we need to make sure uh, to remember all these families. There's uh, this, the Matthews family and the loss of, of, of a loved one and the Johnny Rexroth family. And then, you know, you, and, and then Donnie Tench got a, a great report that they got all of his, his cancers can, you know, his, he's 
cancer free. So we're excited about that. And then others that are still taking treatments and uh, recovering from injuries, we need to continue to remember them in our prayers. And again, uh, we're excited that you're here. Brother Sam be bringing a great message. Brother Gary's got a great music pro, uh, praise time set up for us. And so uh, with that, I don't see anybody, and I didn't bring my scripture Bible with me, so I don't know if there's a deacon going to come up and uh, and read because I don't see anybody up here to read. So we're just going to just keep going because I know I think the testimony is going to be maybe a little longer than that. So we'll just, uh, well, I know we have a testimony to share with you this morning. So anyway, let's have a word of prayer, and then we'll get into the service. Dear God, thank you for loving us. Thank you for all the many things you've done for us. I thank you for this church. Thank you for how we're uh, to be a beacon here in Jamestown. Thank you for all the people that are here, those that are not here. We ask that you would uh, uh, speak to them, and may they feel that they're loved and missed. And Lord, in our Sunday school lesson this morning, Lord, we need to be unified and we need to be uh, working together as a group. And whether we have a full-time pastor or not, you've given us the scripture and you've given us commission to go out and to keep working and to keep reaching those that need Christ and to do things. And Lord, just help us to, to keep our focus and, to, and, our, and help that focus to be on you. Lord, I just... Uh, ask you to be with brother sam as he brings the message speak through him this morning speak through gary as they do our music and lord everything that's done and said here today that we can say that we're glad that we're here and that we can give you all the praise and glory for everything that happens in jesus name amen thank you let's all stand we're going to praise him <clears throat> Living below Place, smile, 
wave, blow them a kiss. <coughs> On, sit down, sit down, sit down. new type of music was coming on the scene, uh, more of a contemporary praise type of music. It's hard to imagine that some of these songs now are 30 years old, but we're going to do a couple of the songs that was really uh, kind of the movement starters on those. Most of you know these songs. Lord, I lift your name on high. Thank you. 
I was uh, accepting Jesus Christ into my life in February 1967. Before then, I served the devil completely. Preacher came to my table one time and sat down and we began to talk and he asked me to come to his church 
And I told him I didn't need his church. I didn't care anything about it. Well, he came back a few weeks later, sat down at the table. We began to talk, and before he got up to leave, he said, could he have a word of prayer? Sure. So he began to pray, and something, this might sound silly, but something touched me, touched my hand. I thought it was a preacher, but I don't think it was. And I accepted Jesus Christ into my heart right there and then. On Sunday, I went to church, made an arrangement to be baptized, and was baptized. And I want to say how much that God has blessed this old boy. He loved me and has loved me more every day. I can feel his hand upon me a lot of times, especially at night. When I wake up at night, I think about him and his presence in my life. And I just thank the Lord that I know a lot of friends, good friends, that's serving the same Christ that I am and our big influence in my life. I'm thankful for my wife. She's been faithful for 65 years now and uh, we have a good life, good relationship, good friends and the love of Christ in my life tops all of it and I believe in my heart that he is present with me day and night from now on I read my Bible and I listen to preaching on the television when they come to a verse that they're explaining and I go to that verse in my Bible and it makes a great understanding a lot of times sometimes it don't but a lot of times though most of the time it opens the scripture up to me with some understanding and I just thank the Lord for what he's done in my life and I praise him every day every hour of every day I just thank him and praise him
<clears throat> he speaks and the sound of his voice is so sweet the birds hush their singing and the melody that he You know, there's all kinds of places the Lord takes us in our lives, right? Sometimes it's the garden. Sometimes it's the valley of the shadow. Sometimes it's the mountaintop. But as you walk through the New Testament and you see the places where Jesus went with his disciples, if you try to put yourself in those places sometimes, uh, it's quite an adventure. Amen? One thing about the Christian life, it's never boring. Well, it can become that way. But that's your own fault. But it can happen. And if it's gotten boring, you're kind of off track, most likely. Because walking with Jesus really is an exciting thing. And there's something new every day to experience. And uh, this, what, this morning I'm going to kind of do a little uh, flashback to last week. Because if you're like me, if it's past a week old, then it's just kind of gone for me. So I just wanted to go back into the book of Joshua. If you'd go there with me, I'd sure appreciate it. Um, yesterday, I actually got to take a bit of a day off. and went out with my, my son and, and daughter-in-law and my grandbaby. <laughs> And uh, we went out on the water, and I got to tell you, that was, that was exciting. But uh, how many of y'all, when you go swimming or go, go to the water, you like to just kind of first dabble your toes in, you know, just to make sure it's not too cold, and then you decide whether you're going to jump in or not? I, I have found when I go to the ocean now, when I was a kid, man, I was jumping in, and I'm in riding the waves and doing everything I can do. And now that I've gotten a little more mature, uh, I just like to look at it. You know, and maybe walk down through the splash, the waves, something like that. But when you're younger, you just jump in. And so this morning, I, I might splash a little bit of water on you. Don't those people irritate you? You're sitting there on the shore and sitting in your chair. And, you know, some kid comes by and he wants to splash you. Like, that's going to be fun. And it's got, come on in, Grandpa. Just come on in. I'm like, get away from me. And I just keep wanting you to come in. This morning, I hope I can splash a little bit of water on you. That you can find some of those times of refreshing. And so we're going to do a little backtracking. We're going to pray first, and then we're going to see what God has to say to us this morning. Father, we do thank you so much for your word. We thank you that it's alive and active and sharper than a two-edged sword. Lord, we pray that your word would uh, just help us to see your truth this morning. We pray that we would experience you here today. Uh, Lord, I pray for those who are here this morning who might be in that garden. 
Well, Lord, I pray for those who are on the mountaintop and just give you praise for them. Lord, we thank you for the testimony that we heard this morning uh, of just how faithful you've been and how faithful our brother's been to you. And Lord, we just thank you for your goodness. We thank you for the freshness that you bring. And we just pray that we might experience the freshness and the fullness of your Holy Spirit today, that you'd speak to us and teach us and be our guide and our counselor. And we just pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to start back. I was there last week, but Joshua chapter 1, verse 10. And this is going to be a refresher. Uh, so Joshua ordered the officers of the people, go through the camp, tell all the people, get your supplies ready. For three days from now, you're going to cross the Jordan here to go in and take possession of the land that your God is giving you for your own. Now, wouldn't you like to know that you got three days to look forward to something that's going to be really, really good? How many of y'all like good news? Okay, they've been waiting to go into the promised land for over 40 years. Now, their ancestors didn't get to go in. Most of these who are about to do this uh, didn't experience the Red Sea themselves. There were some, but most hadn't experienced that. They had just been walking around out in the wilderness. So this promise of the promised land was something exciting for them. Uh, any, any of y'all ever go out west? You know, like Arizona, New Mexico, and experience all the fullness and richness of life? I heard a comedian say one time, you know, that, that talking about Arizona, he said, even, even the vegetation out there knows, don't come here, it's hot. We were out walking out through there and there's a little sign on the side of the, of the walkway that said, you know, if you see a rattlesnake move, they were here first. <laughs> and people want to go visit there. Uh, wilderness, I'm good not going there. I want to go to that land flowing with milk and honey. How about you? And I'm looking for one flowing with chocolate. <laughs> but they're about to experience, amen, they're about to experience something that they've never experienced before, and they're giving them a heads up. you got three days warning. Now, a lot of times we look at things when we get a little advance notice, you go to the doctor and he says, we need to do surgery soon. you got three days. Well, that's, that's a little bit different. But if you knew that you had three days, let's just say that today, I'm not going to announce this to you, but today you got three days to live. What would you do different? What would change? What things are important that you'd want to be sure and take care of? Who would you want to see? What would you want to talk about? What would you want to do in those three days? Well, here they're about to enter into something that's really fun and exciting. And if you're going to go on a vacation or something, you got three days, you're doing some packing. You're getting ready for it. Well, that's what's going to happen with them. He's saying three days, you're going to cross the Jordan. So you're going to leave this land behind you and you're going to go into something really great experience. And then I'm going to refresh this again, verse 12. But to the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh, uh, Joshua said, remember the command that Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you. The Lord your God is giving you rest and has granted you this land. Your wives, your children, your livestock may stay in the land that Moses gave you east of the Jordan. But all your fighting men, fully armed, must cross over ahead of your brothers. You're to help your brothers until the Lord gives them rest, as he has done for you, and until you have taken possession of the land that the Lord your God is giving them. After that, you may go back and occupy your own land, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you east of the Jordan toward the sunrise. We talked about it briefly last night. These were the, the tribes that they're just going to stay over there on the other side of the Jordan. They were happy there. They liked it there. Life was good. But what he's telling them is, I'm about to do something new for the rest of the nation. We're going to cross the Jordan. We're going to go into that land flowing with milk and honey. We're going to go into some exciting times, things that you've never experienced before. And so if you're perfectly happy where you are, that's okay. But just help them get there. And we talked about that some last week. And, and as you're looking for a new pastor, I can almost either he's going to take you into some lands you've never been into or he's going to be boring. Okay? Because new things, I don't, I, I'm one who likes to do the same stuff a lot. I've shared with you all some of my stories, and, and, and my wife likes to do something different. If I find a place I like to vacation, I am perfectly happy to go back there every year. Mm -mm. She wants to go somewhere new. And, and so, how many of y'all like that? How many of y'all like the same old thing? Nobody really wants to admit that. Y'all love my boring life. I am so happy right here. But God wants to do some new things in our life, no matter how old we get. And I'm saying it over and over and over. God is not finished with any of us yet. Amen. I love that testimony. Was that not amazing? You know, because sometimes as we get older, I'm not saying he's old. 94. 94? Okay, I'm saying he's old. <laughs> I, he deserves it. 
And, and, and I think, you know, you look at that in a life of living with Jesus, still saying that he loves him, still saying that he's talking to him every day. That is amazing grace at its finest, don't you think? But he's experiencing new things with the Lord, the things that he's seen. You know, when we go back and wish that things were like they were, not really. Let's look for some new things, some fresh things that God has for us. So he tells them they're going to fight. Now, I love this next part in verse 16. And then they answered Joshua, whatever you have commanded us, we will do. And wherever you send us, we will go. I love this next verse. Just as we fully obeyed Moses, so we will obey you. Do y'all remember the story? How good did they obey Moses? They did not. That's why they stayed in the wilderness. So now they're saying, we're going to do it just like we did with Moses. I hope not. I hope life is going to be better than it was before. Because this time they're making a fresh commitment. How many of y'all ever made a fresh commitment to the Lord? We need to make those every day. We really don't need to wait for revival to get revived. Amen? You know, if you want that fresh wind of the Holy Spirit to blow over, you don't wait till there's a revival. Because when's one scheduled? There you go. You can't wait. You can't wait for the next preacher to come. You can't wait. Why would you wait? You know, if you could enter into the promises of God, why would you wait? Why not start that today? Well, they're getting three days warning. I'm going to tell you, sometimes we think we're ready for the promised land, but we're really not ready. That's why he's giving them a heads up. He's giving them a few days to get ready. And that's what we're going to see in just a minute. But here he said, they're saying we're going to do whatever. Verse 18, whoever rebels against your word, Joshua, and does not obey your words, whatever you may command them will be put to death. Aren't you glad you're a New Testament believer? Okay. Can you imagine if you were put to death every time you didn't obey what God told you to do? I'm going to tell you something. We don't experience life either. When we begin to experience life and fullness is when we do obey what the Lord tells us to do. Now, fortunately, he is a God of grace. And when we mess up, he's there to forgive us. Give us a fresh start every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, right? New every morning. Thank thankfully, that's how the Lord is with us. But he says, but be strong and courageous. That keeps coming back all the way through. Now, I want you to skip over to, to chapter 3. We're going to bypass Rahab this morning and go to chapter 3, where, where everything and all the preparations really get started. And I want to say this is like people get ready. Y'all ever heard that ready, set, go? Uh, another granddaughter story that if, I forgot she was eating something that she was loving. And we'd go ready, set, go. She wanted that next bite of whatever it was we were giving her. And she started saying go. I mean, that was one of her first words. Go, give it to me. Well, we're just going to look at the ready right now. Chapter 3, verse 1. Early in the morning, Joshua and all the Israelites set out from Shittim and went to the Jordan where they camped before crossing over. God's about to fulfill his promise here. Some things are about to happen that are going to be really good for them. It was only seven miles from where they were to where they wanted to get to. Now they're walking, so seven miles is still a long time, long way. Time was needed for them to get everything in order, get, get the instructions that they're going to need. Uh, at this time, they're going to cross the Jordan, but the time of year that it was, the, the mountains, the, the snow up on Mount, uh, um, was it Hebron? Yes, Mount Hermon. The, the snows were beginning to melt, and so the water was kind of swollen and moving pretty fast. And this is going to be the Jordan they're going to experience here. So he says that, that where they camped before crossing over. So they're about to get in the good stuff, but they've got to hang out for a few days. And I'm going to tell you, a lot of times when there is a revival meeting, a lot of people miss the reviving because they're not ready. They didn't camp before they crossed. And that's what we do sometimes. We want to go get all the blessings from God, but we haven't hung out wrong enough to let him speak to us. Now, this evening, I'm going to kind of go break this down a little bit of what we need to do to get ready for that fresh movement of God. And some things that need to happen, a little bit of heart preparation. And to really experience what God has for us, things need to change inside. Because if we're not experiencing everything that God has, there's something in the way. And that's what we just need to deal with sometimes. If you go to church sometime and everybody else walking away, man, wasn't that a great service? Didn't you enjoy that? Didn't you enjoy that song? And you're sitting there going, uh, sure. I, I've been to teachings and, and, and uh, prophecy things and other people were getting blessed and I would be walking out going, I, I didn't get it. Whose fault was that, do you think? It was mine. I wasn't ready. You know, when we have the Lord's Supper, there's a time of preparation before we do that. That, that we, we begin to look inside. We begin to contemplate what's going on. We, we are, have that time to confess our sin, to make sure things are right before, uh, between us and the Lord. And, and that's why we have it. You know, there's some denominations that they do the Lord's Supper every Sunday. 
And, and I used to think, well, wouldn't that just get kind of old and become rote and routine and you really wouldn't think about what it is? The reason they do it is because they want to make sure they're right where God wants them to be. And so we should really have that kind of communion time with the Lord every day when we get started. I mean, he was saying that morning and evening, you know, he's seeking the Lord, he's praying. And if we would take those times and just say, Lord, are we good? Is there anything in me? This is how David prayed. Is there anything in me? Lord, won't you search my heart? Won't you show me if there's any wicked way in me? Because I don't want there to be anything blocking us going here. I don't want anything standing in the way of my relationship with you. And that's where we camp out for a while. Uh, and, and sometimes we need to camp out on certain verses of the scripture until they become a part of who we are. Uh, you know, when we talk about forgiveness, God says these really hard things that if you don't forgive your brother, how can you expect God to forgive you? That if you harbor unforgiveness in your heart, wow. You know, we say given it will be given unto you. When was the last time you really gave to somebody else? Gave of your emotions, gave, gave of, of just actually of some works of service for somebody else. Gave, you know, in the, in the offering boxes. Don't we miss those gold plates and wooden plates? But to give, you know, he said, given, it'll be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Uh, Book of Malachi says, test me in this, try me in this, says the Lord. Why not make just the, the he, uh, heaven open up and pour down blessings on you? If you'll just give, just be faithful to me and watch me go. And, and so sometimes we've got to take a little account. We've got to camp out a little while and say, Lord, the things that you have shown me that I know I need to do. Am I doing those things? You know, we're not responsible for what we don't know, but we're responsible for what we do know. The things that God has shown us, or are we walking in obedience to these things? So there's a little bit of getting ready. And, you know, and just to see what God has for us. So, so they're getting ready to cross over the Jordan. Going to be some great times. But they just needed to wait. You know, when, we, when I first came, we were going through the book of Acts and just talked about how Jesus told the disciples. He said, listen, I'm going away. And he's taken up into heaven. He said, I, I want you to go back to Jerusalem and I want you to wait. I just want you to wait until the promise of the Holy Spirit has come. And we're not good at waiting. We just like rushing ahead and doing things. We just like taking care of things on our own. Well, this is the time of preparation to where we wait and we listen to the Lord and listen to what he has for us. And, and, and I got to tell you, there's going to be something new. There's going to be something fresh. And I really believe that God wants to pour out his spirit on this place like you haven't experienced in a real long time. That God wants to do something fresh at Jamestown First Baptist Church. Anybody give me an amen? amen. You know, I believe that because that's what God says. That he brings us into freshness. He brings us into blessing. And, and so for each one of us here this morning, there's got to be that heart preparation. There's got to be that camping out before we get to where God wants us to be. That time of waiting and seeing what God has. And, and as I was going through this and just thinking, you know, I kind of touched on some of this last week. But I think it's time to camp out on some of it. Just let it, let it get into us. Let us talk and think about that. What is something that God's spoken to you? I, I had a good friend, and uh, he was a pretty heavy smoker. And, and on, the, on his car, he had one of those uh, license plates that said, God is my co-pilot. Now, first of all, I thought, boy, you got him in the wrong seat, you know? God needs to be your pilot. But he told me. He said, you know, he said, I really feel bad sometimes when that's on there because somebody will, you know, be in front of me and they're looking back at that license plate. And there I sit in my in my van and I'm just puffing away. And he said, and that begins to bother me because I begin to wonder what what do they think about me? I'm saying that God is my co-pilot and, and what's my testimony to them? I shared a little bit about my driving patterns last week. And I really got to think about that one, too. You know, honk if you love Jesus, because I'm going to pass you so fast. You're not going to know what's happening to you. <laughs> So we need to think about it. What are some things? I mean, after last Sunday night, I drove slowly home. I actually did the speed limit, and it was really, really hard. <laughs> but when God begins to deal with it, it's about the small things. Maybe it's a neighbor that he's saying, listen, I want you to talk to them. They've been your neighbor a long time, and you all have had words, and you all have had issues, but I want you to go talk to them. Let them see the love of Jesus in your life. That would be something fresh. You know, as we're looking for something fresh, have you ever, ever, ever... Shared your testimony with somebody, done, done what our brother did here. Have you ever shared that with somebody else, even in this church? Do they know when you got saved? They did, do they know what happened and caused you to get saved? Do they know what your life has been like with the Lord? And so begin to share those things. When was the last time you looked at somebody and just spoke a word of encouragement to them? Yeah, just say, hey, God is with you through this. I know you're going through a hard time, but I've been praying for you. Wow. You know, just something that you've never done before. Again, just, Jesus tells us to go into all the world. How about just across the street? 
you know? And so that's some, maybe something new, something fresh for you. But here's the thing, what Jesus, when he told the disciples to wait, he said, wait until you receive the promise of the Holy Spirit, and then you will be my what? Witnesses. And to all the earth. And, and so when you wait, when, you know, and for God to begin to use you, that when you open your mouth and you begin to share him and you begin to experience him working through you, giving you the words to speak, something that's fresh. How about loving somebody that in your natural you cannot love? Y'all know any of those people? I mean, they are just not easy. They're just hard to get along with. Might be a boss, might be a co-worker, might be a family member. One of those uncles or aunts or brothers or sisters. What would happen if you began to pray and just say, Lord, I pray that you would give me love for them. What do you think he's going to say? No. Not going to happen. That's called praying according to the will of God. So certain things that you know you should be doing if you were really a better Christian and just begin to pray that God would enable you to do that. I heard Steve Harvey say one time, he said, well, I'm a Christian. I'm not a very good one, but I'm a Christian. Does that sound like Steve Harvey? Mm -hmm. And so my son loved to pick that one up for a while. He said, I'm a Christian, just not a very good one. Well, he's become a great one now, in my opinion. But, but it's just still that thing of those things that God has spoken to you about. Those things that you know need to change. You know, how many of you are really studying your scripture? Just reading it. Meditating on it. You know, that's, that's camping out just a little while. Doing the things that we know we ought to do. And so that's what they've been doing here. So let's look a little bit further. After three days, the officers went through the camp. This is verse 2. Giving orders to the people. When you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God and the priests who are Levites carrying it, you are to move out from your positions and follow it. Uh, they had been following that cloud of, by, by day and the fire by night. Well, here is the Ark of God. It represents the presence of God. And what he's saying is, is when you see that, then, then you're going to know what to do. Uh, then it says, uh, then you will know which way to go since you ain't never been this way before. Any of y'all ever been somewhere you've never been before? And GPS ain't going to get you there? There are places in Fentress County that GPS does not work. I don't care who you got it with. I found out the hard way. Showing, showing real estate. The first time I found out that just because my phone got me to a place does not mean it will get me back. And so what he's saying here is, listen, you keep your eyes on the ark. You keep your eyes on the priests. You keep your eyes on those who are carrying that thing. And, and you watch. Because you're, you're going to go to some places you have never been before. And how many of you would like to experience something new in your life? I don't care how old you are. How many of you, especially as we get older. I don't want to just li keep living the same way. I don't want to just live like I lived a long time ago. There's some things that I wish I still had when I was first saved. Amen? You remember that joy you had in the Lord? The same thing with going to the ocean. Man, as a little kid, you are ready for that thing. You know, when you go to the lake, you are ready to get in. That's what happened yesterday. We were back on the back of the pontoon, and it's like, I know it's a little chilly, but here we go. You know, immersion. This is why we Baptists got it. We don't do no sprinkling. Mm -mm. We're going all the way. All the way. What is your Christian experience like? Are you just getting sprinkled? Are you getting poured over? Are you getting in all the way? See, there's a lot of people that, that, that they're Episcopalians and they don't even know it. They just walk under the sprinkling. I was brought up Methodist. I was sprinkled as a baby. And that was not enough water for me. Uh, I baptized a, a, a lady. She was in her, her mid-70s. And she was afraid of water. And, and so uh, I actually did it. Y'all can just take me before the Baptist board or whatever. But she was terrified of, of going under. I mean, petrified. Of water, So we decided I'm going to pour her. And what her husband said, he told me, he said, get a 10 gallon bucket, pour it good. <laughs> I just had a little one, but we were good. And, and, and she, she followed the Lord because she just wanted to do what he said to do. But I think for some of us, we, we, just, we just had a sprinkling. We just had a little taste because we didn't want to get fully committed. And that's what we're going to see as they come to the Jordan. This is a river. This is a river that is swollen. This is a river that's going to look kind of scary. This is something they have never experienced before. And, and they're going to have to decide whether they're going to be in or out. And so for us, sometimes we just get a little sprinkling. I'm going to go to church. I'm going to experience a little bit of Jesus. I'm going to hear a couple of songs. I might even sing one of them. I'm going to listen to some preaching. And then I'm going to go home. Or if you know what? I want to go to church today and I want to be ready. On Saturday night, I'm going to camp out a little bit. 
on Saturday night, I'm going to start and I'm going to ask the Lord, Lord, what do you want to use, how do you want to use me tomorrow when I'm with my brothers and sisters? Lord, when I go to church tomorrow, what needs to change in my heart so I can hear what you have to say to me? See, if our ears are not tuned to what God has to say, then we walk in, we walk out, and nothing changes. I sat in church for over 18 years, and I, I, looking back, I'm sure they preached the word, but for some reason I never heard it. Never worked for me. Never got into my heart. Never really paid attention because I didn't have spiritual ears to hear. There are times when I go to church even now that if I'm not ready, I'm not getting it. They're just words. Doesn't matter how good they are, they don't sink into here. They barely get into here. And so camping out, get ready for what God's wanting to do. Spend Saturday night camping out. Just go sit by the river with the Lord and let him begin to speak to you. And you listen to him and just talk to him. Begin to pray. See how, you know, some people, have y'all ever been to prayer meetings where they would go for hours? They used to scare me to death. Man, I love it. I've had some prayer times with people that, that it didn't seem like an hour. It seemed like 20 minutes. Uh, we were doing some at our church. We were meeting together on Saturday mornings and just praying for Sunday and praying for the mission of the church. And it was unbelievable. It was the fastest hour I'd ever experienced in my life. And, and so if we can spend Saturday night getting up Sunday morning. Let me ask y'all this one. Some of y'all who are mature like me or more mature. How often, especially when you're first married, if we can remember back that far, that on Sunday morning, if you were ever going to get into an argument with your spouse, it was Sunday morning. Or if your kids were going to misbehave, it was Sunday morning. You're walking out the door, pfft, the actor's full. You know, so you're going to be late for church. So you're rushing. Have you all ever seen husbands and wives getting out of the car and they're barely talking to each other when they go to church? Guess how much they're going to hear that day. <sighs> getting ready. Getting ready. When Kim and I were first married, I mean, we were freshly married. And we used to go to K. Arthur Bible Studies in Chattanooga. And that was always on Monday night. And for some reason, by Monday evening at about 5.30, we both got home. And for some reason, we just started getting irritated with each other. And, and didn't know why. I mean, it'd be like she'd do something. And was, mm, I'd do something and she was kind of in arms. And it took us probably a month to figure out, do you realize this just happens on Monday? Because we get upset with each other and we're not going to go to Kay's Bible study. Huh. We begin to figure out there's a pattern here. And it's kind of the same thing when you start realizing... Has it ever amazed you that people can get their kids ready to go to school, back when they used to go to school, can get their kids ready to go to school five days a week, pretty much get them to school on time every single day. They go to school at like 8 o'clock or 8.30, boom, but they're there. They're dressed, teeth are brushed, they got their books, they're ready to go to school. Come Sunday morning, don't even have to be there till 9.30 or 10. Can't make it. Get up late. Can't get the clothes together. Can't get the kids to brush their teeth. Can't get the kids to eat. For some reason, Sunday morning is just harder. Camp out on Saturday night. Sunday morning will go better. Because the enemy is out to fight us. The enemy wants to keep us from hearing what God has to say. The enemy wants to make sure that what we do hear God say that it goes in one ear and out the other. And if we camp out a little bit first, get prepared, get ready for what the Lord wants to say. Then we get to hear what God has to say. When was the last time you heard that fresh voice of the Lord? A fresh word. When you got into the Bible and it was like, wow, I don't even remember reading that before. It's because we haven't been camping out. We like to just go, you know. When I'm in the car, man, I don't like to stop. I mean, if I don't care if I need to. I just like to keep going, getting where I'm going. But we need to camp. Here we go. Verse 5. Joshua told the people, consecrate yourselves for tomorrow. The Lord will do amazing things among you. Saturday night. There you go. Camp out. Think about it. Consecrate yourselves. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight, how we really get ourselves ready to hear from what God wants to say. Verse 6, Joshua said to the priest, take up the Ark of the Covenant, pass on ahead of the people. So they took it up and they went ahead of them. That was the priest's job. Now tonight we're going to look at a little bit. Who are priests today? Believers. It says we are a royal priesthood and a holy nation. So who should be leading the charge to take people to God? That would be us. So you got the priests who are going to be the one carrying the ark. And the Lord said to Joshua, Today I'll begin to exalt you in the eyes of Israel, so they may know I am with you as I was with Moses. Tell the priest who carried the ark of the covenant, when you reach the edge of the Jordan's water, go and stand in the river. He didn't tell him, go over there and go, Woo! That's cold. Woo! He said, when you get to the Jordan River, just go stand in it. There's no playing around with it. There's no splashing everybody. It said, you guys are the leaders. You go stand in the flow. Think about that one. That if you could just imagine in your mind that the Holy Spirit is the river of God. That you can just imagine that there's a stream. 
There's a fresh stream, and there's a steady flow coming. And, and, and do you want to, and, and it's just the flow of God's blessings. Do you just want to go and put your big toe in there? Do you just want to go and kind of splash around a little bit? Or do you just want to jump in and experience the fullness of what God has for you? If we could realize that we could get under the spout where the glory runs out and sing and dance and dance about. Just imagine that God's got this river that he wants to pour on us. What did Jesus say? That the Holy Spirit, he will be like a river flowing from inside of you. Oh. Your spring dried up. We got to ask ourselves, are we drinking richly from the fountain that God has for us? Or are we standing in the river? Are we soaking up all that God has for us? Or is life pretty dry? Mundane. Day to day. For the Israelites for 40 years. Same thing. Day and night. Man in the morning. Man in the evening. Man at supper time. I mean that was it. You know. The time they got the meat it made them sick. Because they had so much of it. Day in. Day out. Sacrifices being made. Same thing. All the time. And God says we're about to do something new. Are you ready for it? Are you ready to jump in? Follow your priests. Follow your people. Get ready. And they're going to put their feet in the water. So Joshua says, come here. Listen to the words of the Lord your God. Verse 9. This is how you will know that the living God is among you. That he will certainly drive out from before you the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Hivites, the Jebusites, the Gergesites, the Amorites, and the Jebusites. Get them out of sight. See the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth will go into the Jordan ahead of you. Now then, choose twelve men from the tribes of Israel, one from each tribe. And as soon as the priests who carry the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, set foot in the Jordan and its waters flowing downstream will be cut off and stand up in a heap. Now for those who were around and went through the Red Sea, they've seen this before. So they're ready to go. There's some of y'all here that you have experienced real revival. You've experienced the touch of God. I mean, he said he touched me, you know, that you've experienced a time in the Lord that you will never forget. You will remember a time when whether it was just you and him or you were in a big group of people. But there were some times that you knew what that was like. And if somebody were to say to you in three days from now, you're going to experience it again, even better, even better then you ought to be hungry and take some other people with you to be able to say, listen, I know that God's got more for me than what I'm experiencing right now, and I want to get there. I want to jump in the river. I want to experience what God has for me. I don't even know what it looks like. I can't even imagine what that's going to be. But I'm going to tell you something. It's going to be more than you've ever, ever experienced before. Can you imagine? Okay. I've been on some vacations in some absolutely incredible places in my life. That was one of the perks of being a missionary in Europe. We got to see Europe. Well, three or four places. We worked all the time. But there are some places I'll never forget. And, and there's some places that I'd like to go back to. But I've got to tell you something. There's been some times in the Lord when I want to revisit those places. Because they were so good. There were times when it was so fresh. And times when I experienced the Holy Spirit working through me in, in ways I just couldn't imagine. I was taking a class on evangelism one time. And part of the requirement was that we had to share the gospel. Mm. Tough class. You want to know what the first, probably the first half of that class was about? Preparing our hearts. I mean, really, it, it, was, it was eight weeks of consecration, eight weeks of letting the Lord examine our heart, eight weeks of really looking at the scripture and seeing what God wanted from me, how he wanted me to live. And then the next eight weeks, we began to talk about how to really share our faith, because a lot of times people, as Christians, we feel guilty because we don't do it. The problem is, is because we're not really walking that close with him. We don't have something fresh to share. All we've got is an old memory. We can tell somebody when we got saved, but as far as that freshness today, is it there? If our feet aren't in the water, it's drying up. I know I come back and revisit this a lot. I camp out here a lot. That if we're not drawing and abiding in the vine like John 15 talks about, then there's no freshness. We just dry up, and that's all that happens. Any of y'all want to be a dried fruit? Mm -mm. I like plums. It, before I say this, let me make sure. Uh, what's a prune come from? A plum, right? Okay, I'd much rather have the plum. You know, any of y'all ever get those dried apricots? They were much better when they were not dried. Dried fruit. That's what we are as Christians sometimes. Dried fruit. Because there's no freshness. Something just sucked the life out of us, soaked the moisture out of us, and we're just dried fruit. Which is okay. But the fresh stuff is a whole lot better, isn't it? Isn't it? Just think about what you have in Jesus. Is it fresh? Or is it freeze-dried? You know, is it something that you want to share with somebody? Or is it something so dry nobody else even wants to taste it? I kind of like beef jerky. I like steak better. Amen? 
And so when we look at this, as far as our relationship with the Lord, he said, this is about to happen. Now, now we're going to get into it because all this stuff happens for them. But to consecrate yourselves, get ready, because he says we're going to go in and we're going to experience all the freshness that God has for us. Get ready for it. And I just want to challenge you. I don't know when your next pastor's coming. I don't know, but it might take however long. It might be three days. It might be three weeks. It might be three months. But whatever it is, in that meantime, you be praying that God as a church, as me as a member of your church, get me ready. Get me ready to where I can hear from you and you start praying for that guy that God is going to lead him in such a special way that he's going to be carrying the ark of God and he's going to put his feet in the water. And he's going to lead you into the promised land. You know, pastor, those priests weren't perfect. Pastors are never perfect. I know because I is one. We make mistakes. We need the body to work with us and we work with them. So it's time to be praying for that next guy. And, and, and y'all, I, I, you know, I know a little bit about a church here and, and there's been there's been a series of pastors. And that's true in a lot of churches. And for those on the search committee, here we go again. And you all ever feel that way? Here we go again. We're going to find somebody else and things look good. But here we go again. Let's not go there again. Let's go somewhere else. You know what? Let's just go on the heavenly way. Let's just go where God wants us to go and trust that it might be just a little bit different, but it's OK, because where Joshua took them, it was not easy. And here's one of the things from people. This is one of the words I got in seminary. You, you just you just trust God. You preach the word and everything will work out. You read the wrong Bible, because a lot of times when you're doing everything God wants you to do, it gets tough. And so when this new guy comes, it might have some tough moments. Just might. What do you think? Probably will. We all adjust to each other all the time. Some of y'all like me, some of y'all don't. Some of y'all thinking, bring on the next guy. Yeah. But we're just trying to take you to that freshness. We're just trying to take you to places you've never been before. And we may have to revisit some of the old places before we can get to some of the new places. But to be able to experience all the freshness that God has from you. Would you say your life is fresh in Jesus or has it gotten stale? Is it fresh bread you're eating or is it the stale stuff? Listen, I don't like day old bread. Well, day old's okay. Does it ever petrify you to read a loaf of white bread and it says it's good for like a month and a half? That should scare us. And sometimes our Christian experience is like that. We're living on what was. And it should have been green a long time ago. Freshness. The fresh flow of the Holy Spirit. A fresh touch from God. Something new every morning. What's your experience right now? Redos? Leftovers? Or is it a fresh meal? God wants to give you a fresh meal today. Not the same old stuff you've been eating for weeks, but something fresh. He wants you to experience him in a fresh way. I don't know what that looks like for you, but you do. What is it you're hungry for? What is it you want to see God do in your life? That you've been waiting 80 years for it, 70 years for it, 60 years for it, 5 years for it. But you're waiting to see God do something that can't be explained in any other way except God did it. For them to cross that Jordan, for the Jordan to stand up in a heap, that is not natural. I want to walk in the supernatural. How about you? And God's got that freshness that he wants us to have. We just got to get consecrated. So I encourage you to come back tonight. We're going to look at some of those things to get ready to receive what God has for us. But this morning, he wants to touch you. He wants you to leave differently than you came. He wants you to begin to experience the blessings that he has. Let's stand together and pray. Jesus, we thank you for your word. We thank you that it's fresh. We thank you that it's alive. We thank you that your Holy Spirit is within us, a river of flowing, of living water. And Jesus, we pray that we would begin to experience you in fresh ways like we've never experienced you before. I pray for my family here. I pray for my brothers and sisters, Lord, that we would experience you and that we would know you in a deeper way and that we would not be satisfied from eating yesterday's bread, that we would not be satisfied by drinking yesterday's water, but Lord, that we might be under the spout where the glory runs out. Lord, help us to draw close to you that we would experience you in a fresh way. Father, I pray for those who are here this morning who have never experienced that touch from you. Lord, where they've never really heard your voice speaking, but they think it's going on right now. Lord, I pray that you'd help each one to see the need to know you and to experience you and to experience the rich life that you've promised to each one of us. Lord, we just pray that you would have your way in this invitation time, that you'd be drawn as closer to yourself. And Lord, for those who don't know you, we pray that they would come to know you and trust you, Jesus as their Lord and Savior. We pray that you'd have your way in this time. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. If the Lord's speaking to you, just come and pray. Just come and pray. Living.
Father, we thank you for this day. We just pray that as we walk out of this place today, Lord, we would seek after you and we would experience the fullness and the freshness that you have for each one of us here. I pray for your blessing as we go out. Lord, we pray that when we come back tonight that you would speak us, Lord, speak to us, that you would revive us and just draw us closer to your throne. And we do ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you.